Hi everyone. Have you ever started a project that you thought was only going to take a short amount of time and the more you got into the project, the deeper you dug, the more you thought about, well, I could do this and I could do that and I could do the other thing. And before you know it, your little project has become a great big project. <laughs> well, that's what's happened to me today. And today I want to take you along on my journey as I create a new reading book journal notebook that's kind of a long name let's see I uh, want to take you along today as I create a new book journal now um, I used to keep a paper book journal this particular one was started in 2008 and it was a place where I would record the title of the book and my rating of the book and for example this one happens to have a wonderful idea for an object lesson uh, for teaching and then there are oh gosh so many books in here I would record notes I would record notes uh, I would make sketches and drawings and uh, add other lists of books that I wanted to read and I would keep track of the books that we read during the school years um, and it just was a wonderful way to uh, keep track of all of the books that we had read. In 2018 I started doing things more on the digital platform but I'm getting way ahead of myself. Today what I want to do is I want to take you on my journey of creating a book journal from start to finished? I don't know that it's going to be finished. From start to functional. Now, <clears throat> this may be a long video, so I probably will break it into shorter pieces uh, so that you uh, don't have to spend too much time with me and uh, you can learn about all of the steps of setting up a new notebook and going through and adding some background pages if you would like to do that in the form of downloading a PDF and then creating some special uh, forms that you might want to use within your own book journal or maybe you're not even creating a book journal maybe you want to transfer this idea to a gardening journal or a recipe book or a portfolio I don't know. There are all kinds of things that you could do with the information that I'm going to share with you in the next couple of videos. So I hope that you will stick with me. Hi everyone, I'm Crystal from A Crystal Clear Life where we focus on planning, organizing, and living a more simplified life. At least that's the plan anyway. Today, I wanted to take you on my journey of creating a brand new notebook for my book journal. Now, I was um, not really thinking about creating a book journal this year, but when I sat down to do my uh, 2022 list of books, I decided that I would take a look at maybe doing a reading challenge. Well, then that got me thinking about all the other ways that I had listed the books that I had read and kept track of book discussion questions and projects and assignments and just things that I had learned throughout the years. And as I took a look at that, I realized that I now have book information scattered throughout many, 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 many notebooks. So what I want to do is compile all of that information. Now, some of my followers have asked me the question before, how do you start in OneNote? How do you know what notebooks you need? How do you know what sections you need? And my answer is always to start with one notebook, and I use my personal notebook for that. And as I have things that I need to store, I simply create a new section. And then when that section gets too big, or I feel that my information is scattered in too many places, then I will create a new notebook specifically for that particular topic. And that's what I want to show you how to do today. Okay, let's jump into the computer and let's get started on this process. Okay, well, here we are in the computer, and you see that I started setting up my 2022 reading 
uh, challenge for myself and I decided that I wanted to do like a 365 reading and learning challenge. I got a lot of these ideas for reading challenges from Ken's over on YouTube and I will be sure to link her channel below so that you can go and check her out. She does a lot of bookish content and I really enjoy that and I wanted just to say thanks to her for creating all of this inspiration in me uh, even though my challenges are going to look very different than hers because she bullet journals and I'm a digital planner. That leads me to me setting up my 365 day challenge. As you can see here on the screen, I simply have a year at a glance calendar and this calendar was downloaded from Calendarpedia. And again, I will link that in the description section below in case you want to check out their calendars. I love this particular format. I've used it for many things. I've used it for uh, long-term planning. I've used it for perpetual birthdays and anniversaries. And I just love it because it's a table, so it can grow and be as big as I need it to be, or it can stay as small as I need it to be. In this particular case, you also see at the top of the table, I set up a key. I used an icon from the widgets uh, font for a book an audiobook and an ebook, which I would either read on my Kindle or um, through the Libby app. What I decided to do is simply put a picture of the cover of the book uh, for the days that I was reading that book, and then I would also indicate whether it was an audiobook, a book, or a Kindle. And at the end, when I would finish reading the book, I would list how many pages it was. So. The Midnight Library, the first book here, I finished on the 2nd of January, and you see here that I have listed that it was 229 pages. Okay, so once I got this challenge done, I started thinking about all of the other books that I have read throughout all of the other years. And of course, part of my brain said, you know, you really should keep a spreadsheet of all that. Then you could sort them by title or author or what year you read them by or all of those kinds of things. And who knows, I may still do that because I think that's a good idea. But <laughs> for today, I have lots of other reference materials that I also store with books other than their titles. When I did a quick search, let me go up here to the search button. And you can see that I typed in the word book. And when I do a quick search of the word book, you see all of the titles that come up with the word book in it. So I have 39 listed here where I have the word book in the title of a page. And you can see on the far right hand side here that they are in my personal notebook and a shared notebook and 22 planner and 21 planner and on and on and on. I just seem to have them scattered all over the place. Okay. Uh, then I have, <laughs> then I have on down here, I have all of these book titles uh, and I know they're book titles. Uh, because some of them are just books that I read last year. So I recognize all of those and there's 364 of those. So as you can see, I have a lot of bookish content spread throughout my notebooks and I thought it was time to consolidate all of that into one notebook. So the first thing that we need to do to kind of consolidate all of this information is we need to start a new notebook. So I thought this would be a good idea. I can take you on this journey from start to functional of finishing this book notebook. And we're gonna go back over here to the far left-hand side. And I am going to click on this, which says currently 2022 Crystal Life Planner and the little drop-down menu. Then it will list a bunch of other notebooks that I have open. At the top, there's a place where you can add a notebook. So I'm going to click on that and it's going to ask me uh, where I want to store that. And I'm going to store it on OneDrive where all of my other files are. And I am going to call this, uh, let's see, Crystal's Book Journal. Okay and create notebook. 
That's all I have to do. Your notebook has been created. Would you like to share it with other people? So at this point, I could click on invite people and somebody that I usually share my notebooks with would be my husband. Or in this case, because it is book related, I would probably share it with my daughter. And to do that, all you do is send them an email with a link to the notebook, and then they have access to the notebook. Because we're on camera, I'm going to say not now, and I'll do that later once I get the notebook set up. So here we have the brand new notebook. It is that easy. And now it says at the top, Crystal's Book Journal. And again, if I drop down this menu, you see all of my other notebooks are still there and open. It's just created a new notebook for me. Okay. All right. Now I start off with section one, which is fine. I have space across the top where I can add as many sections as I want to. Um, but I'm just going to leave it for section one at the moment, because the next step that I want to show you is, um, if I want it to look like a journal, I can download uh, a PDF file to use as the background of like a spiral notebook or journal that I might want to keep. Now for some of my pages that I have book discussion questions on and that kind of thing, I'm not going to use that kind of background, but uh, for some pages I may want to do that. And if you were setting this up as maybe a planner or a different kind of journal, learning how to import a PDF file is a good idea. Okay. So uh, that's the step that I want to take you to next. Next, what I did is I went online and I downloaded a planner notebook that I liked. And this one happens to be from DCP Digitals, which is one of my favorite uh, online Etsy shops to buy things from. I'll put a link uh, in the description below in case you're interested in checking out the things that they have there. But you can see here in my folder that I have a number of different notebooks. Some are from DCP Digitals, some are from other places, but the one that I want to use today is this notebook. I like it because it's green. It's a little bit different than what I normally do. So I'm going to double click on that and it's going to actually open in my browser. And so here's the cover of the notebook, which once I get it into my uh, OneNote notebook, I can decorate the way that I want. Uh, again, this is from DCP Digitals and it has an index page. There are 60 pages in this notebook. And then this is what each page looks like. It is simply a blank page, a blank slate of which I can do whatever I want to on for my book journal, which for me is absolutely perfect. <laughs> I do know that DCP Digitals does have a book journal uh, that you can purchase that has spaces for you to fill in reviews and all of that kind of thing. Um, but because the information that I have is in such a variety of uh, ways, I wanted to just have a blank notebook. So all 60 of the pages look exactly like this. They are blank pages. Okay. All right. Now, uh, the next thing that I want to show you is how to take this PDF file and have it print out in my new notebook. Now, um, I've done this before and I've showed you this uh, before with my 2022 planner and my holiday planner. One of my followers gave me a tip for how to add, instead of putting all of the pages into one page on your notebook, how to actually spread them out over multiple pages. So today, thanks to Thea Muller, um, I want to share that tip with you. So let's see how that works. I have to quickly back, jump back to OneNote. So here in OneNote, if you go all the way over to the file menu and you go down to options, you see a whole bunch of options come up. You want to jump down to advanced and then you want to scroll all the way down to printouts. 
In the printout section, you see there are two boxes. One says, insert long printouts on multiple pages. That means if you have a 10-page document, each printout page will come up on its own page in your OneNote notebook. We're going to check that box because that's what we want to happen. Then it says, there's another box that says, automatically set inserted file printouts as the background. Now, if you're somebody who works in OneNote, you know that you can have a graphic or a PDF page that is your background. And if you set it as the background, it kind of locks it in place and then you can write on it or add things to it. And that background PDF does not move around. In this case, again, I want to try this. So I'm going to check that to automatically set the inserted printout as my background. So when it comes in, it will be locked in place. Okay. Then you say, okay, then I can go back to edge and back in our notebook. I am going up here to the print button and I'm going to choose one note instead of picking any of my other uh, PDFs or printers, I'm going to choose OneNote. And I'm going to say I only want one copy. I want to print it in landscape because it is a landscape style uh, planner. I don't think that I want all 60 pages at this point. I think I am only going to do pages 1 through 12. And I want it to print in color. Let's look at more settings. Paper size, letter, fit to printable area is fine. One sheet per page is fine, 600 DPI. It doesn't have to be very high resolution because I'm not going to print this. I just need it to look good on the screen. Then I'm going to say print and cross my fingers. Now what they have to do is they go through a flattening process uh, to get each page ready to print. And once that has happened, a box for OneNote will come up and OneNote will ask me where I would like this to be printed. Okay, so you just saw appear on my screen the box that says, where do you want this insert to be printed? And it says to pick a section or a page. Now we just started this uh, new notebook. So I want to go down to the new notebook. There's Crystal's book journal. You can see it right there. And my new section, that's where I'm going to print this. So that's where I want to choose. Okay. So I highlight that to say, yep, this is where I want it to print. Okay. Now you can see on my screen that there are no pages in there except this first untitled page. So let's see what happens. Click OK. And there are all the pages. So there's the cover and it's labeled as printout. Then page two has my index. Page three is blank. Four is blank. Five is blank. And you can see that the entire page is there. So there's nothing that's cut off and you can see that it is already set as the background. Now, how do I know that it's already set as the background? Because when I click on that image anywhere, I do not get those little dashed lines. Let's say I want to move it or resize it. I'll show you how to do that. So you're going to right click on the graphic. And you're going to come down here and see where it says set picture as background. You're going to uncheck that. Then you see that your graphic gets these little circles and dotted lines around it. At this point, I can move it. Let's say I want to move it up a little bit. That's fine. Let's say I want to make it bigger because I have more that I want to put on this page. I can do that as well. Okay. All of that works. Then when I get it exactly like I want it, I can come back in here and say, set picture as background. And now you see again, when I click on it, it does not move anywhere and I can start 
writing on it with my Apple Pencil or adding things to it, adding graphics, adding tables, all of that kind of thing. Okay, and let me just quickly show you. So I could go up here and I could insert a table and you see that table will come up there. I can go to my draw menu, I can choose a pen and I can start writing, hello. Now I'm writing with my mouse, so I'm not doing a very good job. Um, but you see, I could insert shapes if I wanted to. So I could do whatever I want. This is like a blank uh, slate for me, okay? I think for this first video, creating a new notebook and printing out the PDF is a great start. I wanna do one more part. I wanna add a couple of different sections. So I wanna go up here to my little tabs at the top and I want to create a new section. And this one I want to call discussion questions. Okay, because I have a lot of books that I have discussion questions for and I want a section to record that. I may also decide if I wanted to do, you know, my 2021 books, my 2022 books, I could set up a section for each year. I haven't decided if I want to do that or not yet, but I do know uh, that I did want to have a section for uh, challenges. And that's a place for me to, as I run across, like from Ken's um, YouTube channel, as I run across interesting challenges that I might want to uh, have in the future, I want to be able to have a place to put those challenges. Like I saw, of course, the A to Z challenge is something that everybody does, but uh, there was a Disney challenge, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, my daughter and I did a Charles Dickens challenge one year where we tried to read as many Charles Dickens books as we could. Um, it was a Dickens of a time, I tell you. <laughs> anyway, so those are a couple uh, sections that I think that I want to have. Now, when you have these sections, remember you can add as many sections as you want. You can also come in here and change uh, the, the color of the section if you want. There's a whole list of things that you could change it to. Let's change that one to purple. Um, let's see, what else can you do for your sections? Um, oh, you can password protect a section, which is something that I had to do when my daughter was younger because I would come up with a list of books that we were gonna read uh, for school that year. And since we homeschooled, and she was such an avid reader, she always wanted to get her hands on the next set of books that we were gonna read. So I always teased her and said, no, no, I've locked those in the vault. You can't find out until school starts. <laughs> anyway, um, but that's a simple way to make different sections. Now, I know that one thing people always talk about is wanting to have links in their planner. I am personally somebody that doesn't feel like I need a whole lot of links in my planner, especially planners that I do in OneNote because they have all of the sections across the top and they have all of the pages listed down the side so you can see exactly what's in this notebook at a glance. And if not, they have such a wonderful search feature that I really don't feel that I often need links but you can put links in notebooks if you would like, okay? And let me show you how easy that is to do. For example, page number two here is our index. So I am going to go up here, let me get rid of my drawing tool. I am gonna go up here and I'm gonna change page two to the word index, okay? Now, when I go to page three, you can see there's a little tab up here. It's just part of the graphic and it says index. Now, if I click on that, it does nothing at this point, okay? But if I want to insert a link, I can go to my insert menu, come over to the word link, click, and it will say, uh, what text do you want to, to display? And I can say index and it will say, 
where do you want that link to go? I can link it to a page on the internet or I can come down here in my other OneNote notebooks and I can find my book journal. Section 1 and index page and I can say OK and now you see I have a link right there that says index okay I can put that right on top of the index that's there okay maybe I want to make that a little bolder so it stands out and looks like a tab label okay now if I'm on page three and I for some reason want to go back to my index all I have to do is click that and it takes me back to the index page now you may be saying crystal that's great but that's only on page three well remember this is a text box and all I have to do is copy that text box and then I can take it to page four and I can paste it, paste on the side, move it to where I want it to be. And now it's on page four. And now it's on page five. Okay. And wherever I am, I can tick touch index and it will take me back to the index page. So it's that simple. You can add links into OneNote if you really want them to be there. Okay? All right. So today we have learned how to set up a brand new notebook. And in this case, we're creating a book journal. We have added sections to that notebook. We've changed the colors of those section titles. We have added a PDF printout and we've printed it on multiple pages and we've set those pages as the background so our notebook is now ready to go. And we have also learned how to put links in if that's something that we want to do. Wow, that's a lot. And I think that's enough for this first video. In the next video, what I want to do is I want to start gathering all of those things that I have spread out throughout my notebooks and start consolidating them into my new book journal. Well, thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And I just wanted to say thank you uh, for spending some time with me today. I'd like you to consider subscribing if you haven't subscribed already. You can click on my face at the end of this video and that will take you to the subscribe button. Or there's a little tiny kitty cat over here in the corner that you can click on him too and that's also for subscribing. If you found value in anything that you have uh, learned with me today, please give me a thumbs up or hit that like button down below. That really is valuable to me and I appreciate that. Leave a comment if you'd like to get in touch and here's hoping that you can live a more simplified and organized life through better planning. Until next time, okay, bye.